ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to q2 fy23 earnings conference call of barbecue nation hospitality limited hosted by ambit capital as a reminder all participant lines will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr amandeep grover from ambit capital thank you and over to you thank you good evening everyone welcome to q2 fy23 earnings call of babiki nation hospitality limited from the management we have with us mr kayun danani managing director mr rahul agrawal ceo and board team director mr anurag mittal chief financial officer and mr bijesh sharma head of investor relations before we begin the presentation i would like to remind you that some of the statements made in today's conference call may be forward looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties kindly refer to the earnings presentation for detailed disclaimer i now hand over the conference over to mr kayun danani thank you and over to you sir thank you a very good evening ladies and gentlemen i take the pleasure in welcoming you to quarter 2 fy23 conference call of babiki nation this was a milestone quarter in terms of store additions as we crossed 200 marks during the quarter we celebrated this milestone event by participating in dhan utsav festival serving meals to 200 underprivileged kids across each of our 200 restaurants serving a 40000 meals we added 10 new stores during the quarter taking our total store count to 205 stores and remain confident of achieving our guidance of 40 stores for fy23 on the existing 205 restaurants barbecue nation india network has 186 restaurants toscano has 13 restaurants and international portfolio includes 6 restaurants we continue our growth momentum in quarter 2 fy23 with year on year revenue growth of 41% this was given by 23.4% same store sales growth and new addition store additions our dining business has grown by 61% on year on year basis again driven by volume increase and increase in average realization our dining business growth was partially offset by 23% year on year decline in delivery revenues while our delivery business volumes have increased on year on year basis average order values have come down due to the change in product mix our delivery business has stabilized during the quarter and we are starting to see marginal uptick in monthly delivery revenues as discussed during the last quarter with the objective of further enhancing our delivery portfolio we launched a biryani brand called dam safar dam safar was launched during the second half of the quarter across 25 locations the initial response to this product has been very encouraging and we plan to launch dam safar across all our restaurants in a phase manner by the end of fy23 our gross margins improved by over 40 basis point during the quarter as compared to the previous year and dropped by 70 basis point as compared to the previous quarter this was primarily led by input cost inflations we are seeing moderation in some of our input cost and believe that the gross margins should marginally expand during the second half of the year a reported ebitda margin was 19.3% as compared to reported ebitda margins of 22.6% in same quarter of the previous year however last year we had the benefit of some one of rent waivers adjustments for these waivers our core ebitda margin remained flat compared to the same period last year this translates to a core ebitda growth of 39.1% versus the previous year our margins are also impacted by the higher mix of new and yet to mature restaurants our restaurant level ebitda margins for the mature restaurant continues to be strong and healthy we continue to remain focused on our core strategy of expanding the barbecue nation india network 
building a strong delivery business, growing the Toscano brand and calibrated expansion of our international business. We are extremely focused on growing each of our these four verticals to build one of the largest food service companies owning its own restaurant brands. With this, now I hand over to Rahul to take you through the quarterly performance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. Good evening. In quarter two FY23, consolidated revenue from operations were 310.5 crores, delivering a year-on-year growth of 40.6%. This was driven by chain store sales of 23.4% and network expansion of 40 new stores during last 12 months. On a sequential basis, overall revenues were relatively flat, despite the fact that Q2 is a seasonally weak quarter for the business. Dining business grew by 61% over last year, given by both volume growth and increase in average price realization. In the delivery segment, delivery transactions have increased on a year-on-year basis. However, average order value has declined due to the change in product mix. This led to uh, overall uh, delivery revenue declining by 23% versus the previous year and around 65% versus the previous quarter. The share of our box business has declined and share of a la carte orders have increased. Based on our menu re-engineering exercise, we also launched a few combo meals, which caused very encouraging response. Launch of Dhamsafar also added to the delivery revenue, though marginally. Uh, Dhamsafar was operating in 12% of our network, and that too broadly for only a month. After a few quarters of sequential decline in delivery, we are seeing uptick in our overall daily delivery sales, and believe that going forward, delivery business should start contributing to overall growth. On segment basis, each of the three businesses have performed well. Barbecue India revenue grew year-on-year by 38%. Revenue from Toscano business doubled compared to same period last year, and our international business recorded a year-on-year -year revenue growth of 28%. Consolidated gross margin for the quarter was 66.1% compared to 65.6% in quarter to FI22. We were able to marginally improve the gross margin as compared to the last year, despite inflationary pressure on input cost. Our calibrated price hikes in the past year and improved operating efficiencies enabled us to manage gross margins better. On sequential basis, Gross margin declined by 70 bits, largely led by input cost inflation. We have also not taken any structural price hikes during the quarter. We are already seeing some softening in core input cost and believe that gross margin should marginally improve in H2 of the fifth career. Reported EBITDA for the quarter was around 60 crores, with margins of 19.3% as compared to EBITDA margin of 22.6% in the previous year's same quarter. EBITDA for comparable quarter last year included some one-off rental waivers, as they mentioned. Adjusting for these, the margins were flat, and our core beta margins also core beta uh, also grew around 39% year on year. Adjusted beta margin, which is uh, pre India's numbers, uh, India's 116, was 10.5% during the quarter and grew by 28.2% versus last year. Again, adjusting for these one of waivers, uh, rental waivers that we got last year, the growth in a beta core uh, adjusted beta uh, uh, without India's 116 was around 75%. Beta margins also has the impact of new store added during last one year and which are yet to mature. Out of total network of 205 restaurants, 47 restaurants are classified in the new restaurants, and out of this, 40 were added only in uh, last one year. The core portfolio of matured store continues to do well. Despite quarter two being a seasonally soft quarter, this matured portfolio uh, delivered average annualized revenue of 6.67 crores uh, per restaurant, with average operating margins of 19.2%. This is restaurant operating margins, again, uh, three index one and six. On H1 basis, this matured portfolio delivered annualized revenue of around 6.8 crores uh, per restaurant, with restaurant operating margins of around 20%. As we enter sequentially a seasonally stronger uh, second half uh, of the business, we remain confident of delivering the average annualized revenue of 7 crores per restaurant, with around 21% restaurant operating margin in our matured portfolio. We also reported uh, net cash flow from operating activities of Rs. 135 crores during first half of this fiscal year. And net of lease payments, uh, the net cash flow from operating activities were 73 crores for H1. Overall, ad downloads have also increased uh, to around 5.1 million. And the share of Barbecue Nation India revenue from own digital assets have grown to around 28.7% in quarter to FI23. We also added 10 new restaurants uh, during the quarter, taking the overall network to 2 and 5. Out of these 10 restaurants, 7 were added in Metro and Tier 1 markets, and 3 were added in uh, Tier 2 cities. Metro Tier 1 and Tier 2 Tier 3 cities mix remain at around 70-30 uh, mix. Now, further, we have around 16 restaurants under construction and an equally strong pipeline of sites under evaluation. Uh, as Kavi mentioned, we are confident of uh, adding 40 restaurants during the year. And broadly, this will include uh, 33 to 35 uh, barbecue nation restaurants in India, around 4 to 5 Toscano restaurants, and uh, 1 to 2 barbecue nations in international business, uh, uh, again, primarily Middle East. 
Also to reiterate, each of our business segments are independently generating operating cash flows, and these operating cash flows are primarily used for expansion in respective segments or geographies. We do not need to allocate any capital from our barbecue nation standalone balance sheet to our Tuscaloosa business or international business for the planned expansion in these businesses. We have been focused on our four pillar strategy of accelerating barbecue nation India uh, dining business growth in delivery. Unlocking the growth potential of Tuscano, and again calibrated international expansion to drive growth going forward. We can now open the session for Q and A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Percy Pantaki from IIFL. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, hi Rahul. Good morning. My first question is on capex. Uh, would you be able to give some idea on what is the total capex you would do at a consolidated level for FI 23 and FI 24? So uh, for the 40 restaurants that we are uh, opening up uh, and including the capex for uh, maintenance and uh, uh, some capex will also go towards our uh, biryani project, we'll do approximately 135 uh, crores of capex uh, in this financial year. And uh, based on the growth plan for next year, and assuming that it remains at between say 40 to 45 restaurants, next year also the capex would be anywhere between 135 to 150 crores. Okay, understood. Secondly, uh, on your delivery sales, uh, which is down about twenty uh, percent YOY, uh, any thoughts on that? Why this is happening? I mean, on such a small base, that too. So, so uh, like I mentioned in our opening remark, uh, our share of business uh, mix is changing. Our share from uh, the box business is coming down. Uh, currently, it's approximately forty-five uh, odd percentage. And our alcohol order uh, uh, business has gone up, uh, and that obviously is a individual consumption order, and the EOBs are lower there. So, uh, what I am actually most uh, excited about is the fact that uh, uh, between last year and this year, our transaction volumes have gone up. Uh, there is no doubt that we are grappling with the fact that our delivery business was going down sequentially over last five six quarters, right? So the priority of the management team was to ensure that uh, you come up with a with a product which sort of fits. Uh, Uh, the consumer, uh, you know, need. Uh, given that the barbecue in the box business was coming down, it was more of a of a group eating sort of product type. Right? Uh, now, uh, as I said, in the current uh, exit month of say September, and also continuing that in the month of October and November, we are seeing that the numbers on a monthly basis are actually at five months high. So, we have broken that sequential decline trend now, and given that we also launched new combo offers and the transaction volumes are up. I expect this business to now uh, start contributing to the growth. So quarter three, for example, is already looking uh, looking up from what we were in the in the previous quarters. And uh, so this is the this is short term. Long term, uh, I think uh, we will be at uh, an average AOV of anywhere between 500 to 550, and then focus on doing the transaction volumes in in, in this business. So how long you think before we go back to our original 50 to 55 crore per quarter run rate on delivery? So, uh, look, based on the current numbers, uh, uh, maybe quarter one of uh, of next year, uh, uh, or if I look at uh, uh, cumulatively, so what you're saying is 200 to 250 crores uh, number. Uh, you know, FI 24 should be a real achievable. There's uh, quarter three itself is is looking up from where we uh, uh, where we were at in quarter two. But that could also be a seasonal, normal seasonality Q3 always being better than Q2, right? So you're right. Uh, but like I said, our September numbers are also good, right? And September numbers also are seasonally, uh, you know, weak, uh, given that there are there are a lot of vegetarian consumption days, right? Uh, right. Uh, and that trend also continued in the month of uh, October, which also had, uh, you know, festivals like uh, uh, like Diwali, uh, you know, and those festivals. So I think. Based on what I'm seeing, both in the month of September and October, I'm excited about uh, about the uptick that we are uh, that we are noticing in this business. And obviously, quarter three should help, like you said, uh, with uh, with better performance in the month of December. So, uh, you know, to answer your question, uh, 50, 55 crores, uh, which is uh, annualized 200 crores, FY24, 
uh, given that there will also be some new sites which will add up to us, should, uh, should be really achievable. Understood. And uh, uh, on your uh, guidance uh, of uh, 7 crore per restaurant and 15% margin on an annual basis, that's for the mature store, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, 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 how would this look at the overall uh, company level, including the new stores? These numbers would need to be adjusted to what extent? So, uh, for this financial year, look, the, the new store portfolio is actually not even two year old, but only one year old, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at uh, the recent opening in last uh, uh, two quarters, uh, we had opened practically half of this, and that too in a seasonally weaker first half of the business, right? So, overall, uh, the impact on margin decline because of uh, this new portfolio, maybe, you know, uh, maybe one percentage at max. Uh, but uh, uh, good thing is that even this new portfolio is actually more skewed towards metro markets. And in metro markets, which are also one uh, uh, premium site as compared to, uh, you know, say tier two, tier three, and the rental, uh, uh, you know, on a on a first quarter business that you pay in these markets are more. So the initial losses in these businesses are actually higher because uh, uh, it takes in our business uh, uh, at least three to six months to even stabilize, right? But since you are based in metro market, the FI23, FI23, obviously, because uh, everything is so new, I understand the issue, and I'm not looking at uh, FI23 at all, but more at a FI24 level, uh, uh, at an overall company consolidated level, this 15% for mature stores would translate into what? 13 and a half for the overall company, or 14? No, or, so I mean, uh, the drive should, uh, should not be more than drive should not be more than one percentage point. So. Uh, okay. Maybe 14.25. Okay, okay. And last question on uh, Damsafar. Can you give some idea on uh, uh, how many cities it is in or how many restaurants are servicing that? And also, uh, 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 how do we see this ramping up over the next one to two years? So, uh, as of September, we were in uh, around 25 outlets. As of October, we are already in around uh, 42 outlets. Uh, by end of December, uh, we'll try and go to around 75 and hopefully try to be in all the outlets by end of this uh, financial year. Month-on-month, uh, -month, uh, we are seeing an increase in average daily sales uh, uh, you know, in the outlets that we launched. Uh, I think it's too early. Uh, the exciting thing is uh, uh, you know, the response, uh, the ratings that we have uh, on this business. Uh, obviously, there are product trials, there are some uh, initial... Uh, uh, you know, changes that uh, we need to do to the menu also, but uh, uh, the initial response on this has been very good. Now, uh, in terms of longer term picture, if I look at my UBQ business and see how that performed pre COVID versus post COVID, we used to do an ADS of around uh, three, four thousand rupees pre COVID. Uh, that ADS in UBQ business has gone to around 20,000 uh, you know, rupees. Now, even if we do say five or 10,000 uh, uh, rupees ADS in our Damsafar uh, brand, and you know, we all know that brand is one of the large categories. Uh, 5,000 ADS at 200 dollar outlet days will give us approximately a crore every month, which is around 1% uh, percent, uh, adding to the top line, right? So, uh, like you said, uh, we own the infrastructure, we own uh, uh, the capability to serve multiple uh, different, um, uh, you know, SKUs, and then can we create uh, more uh, brands out of these, and then add to the overall uh, revenue potential of these outlets. So, uh, that's the broad numbers that we have right now. Again. Uh, we'll come back to uh, uh, to you once uh, once we had some history of at least uh, three four quarters, right? Otherwise, it's too early to sort of comment. Right, right. Thanks, and all the best. That's all for me. Thank you, Pati. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Pritesh Shedda from Lucky Investment Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, with this, uh, uh, the new stores being added in the system now on a regular basis, so we have 40 this year, and then we have this whole ramp up from 180 to 300 stores over the next three years. Uh, will it continue to impact the margin and not bring in the overall operating leverage in the system and impact the matured store uh, overall performance as well? Uh, and, uh, you know, past because, you know, we had always discussed this and you mentioned new store will not impact, but what we are seeing in the numbers is new store impacting. So your comments there would be very helpful. So, uh, uh, look, it, it will impact. It has obviously impacted our uh, numbers uh, uh, in this quarter. And uh, uh, in the past calls also, we had always said that uh, 
they are looking at around 7 crore average uh, revenue from a mature portfolio with around 21% margin uh, and uh, you know there will be some drag from the new store because it typically takes between 2 to 3 years for stores to mature uh, right uh, so that is there but uh, obviously in this quarter uh, uh, it is uh, uh, if you look at this quarter numbers one almost 25% of our portfolio is uh, is less than one year old uh, that too is uh, uh, is is a little bit for the for the seasonally weaker quarter and that too where the portfolio is most skewed towards metro markets where the initial losses are slightly more than what you would expect in a uh, in a uh, in a tier to tier three side right uh, i think uh, i believe since the portfolio also skewed towards metro markets uh, the revenue per outlet potential in these metro markets is higher as compared to tier to tier three uh, markets and that's why once uh, this uh, this portfolio of 40 restaurants sort of goes through their initial cycle of two years Uh, this will start uh, 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 delving the same return as a mature portfolio. Usually, what is the ramp up of a new store? Uh, if you could give from zero to six months and six to twelve months in terms of revenue and in terms of uh, operating profitabilities. So, uh, zero to six months uh, typically flattish or uh, you know uh, very low single digit margins. Uh, for the entire first year, uh, we would look at around seven to eight percent uh, margins. Uh, second year we look at uh, store margins of around uh, 14 to 15 percent, and third year it will come to around 21 percent. So, sir, when we add, we are going to add 20 percent to our outlet this year. We are going to add about another 15 to 18 percent of our total outlet next year. So, this, uh, so this, is it fair to assume that the some amount of drag on the overall company margin will exist and if it exists by what percentage should it exist so uh, as this entire uh, you know portfolio matures and obviously there is some uh, you know same stuff that should also come from the uh, from the mature portfolio uh, so drag which is higher now should uh, come down over the time you mentioned 0 to 6 months is zero profitability 6 to 12 months is single digit so for the entire full year, we will do around uh, seven to eight percent margin. So actually, second house, uh, you know, on the new new portfolio, on the new portfolio, yeah. So the trajectory zero to six is uh, zero. Six yeah, to six twelve months is a single digit, and it takes twenty-four months to reach the restaurant operating margin number, right? No, so I said second year would be around fifteen percent, and the third year would be around twenty-one percent. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Varun Singh from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, so my first question is on the delivery uh, part of business. Uh, so as you mentioned that uh, the mid sustained and uh, primarily revenue contribution from the box business has come down to 45%. Uh, if you can give more uh, detail regarding your understanding about uh, what is the primary reasoning for the box business contribution coming down and where, where do you see this number to stabilize? So, uh, look, it, it has been coming down, so uh, uh, very difficult to give you a, a forecast on where this will stabilize, but uh, broadly what we're seeing is our AVs have been pretty much uh, holding up uh, over last uh, last you know, two, three quarters uh, at around 500, 550 levels, right? So uh, even in our box business, uh, uh, there are some products at around 900 rupees and there are some products at around 600 and 700 rupees. And uh, uh, during the current quarters, we also come up with uh, new combo offers uh, whose proportion has uh, increased on an overall uh, uh, basis. Okay. Okay. And, uh, uh, and uh, I mean, uh, do you think that uh, this reduction in the or uh, movement in the shift in the revenue mix from box towards all that uh, is primarily because of the impact of inflationary thing and uh, because customers downgrading uh, any uh, I mean any analysis over there. So, so uh, this is also a group eating uh, eating product uh, as we have uh, uh, you know things opening up. This is really well during COVID times as things opened up uh, gradually. This uh, as a portion came down, but uh, overall, a la carte uh, orders have gone up, which is more uh, you know, skewed towards individual consumption. Uh, uh, so that is uh, that is there. I don't think it is customer downgrading from uh, uh, from just box to 
to a la carte. Also, you know, as we have increased our menus from uh, uh, many options on uh, you know, on combo offers, uh, you know, maybe there is some shift from uh, uh, from uh, box business to uh, uh, to a la carte in terms of uh, one box business is equal to now one and a half uh, a la carte order, right? Uh, we don't have detailed insights on that because large part of our business also comes from aggregators. Right, right. And uh, Rahul sir, uh, I mean, if we say that, uh, uh, if you can also help us understand what kind of trends that we are building around delivery business, other than the menu innovation that we could optically see. Uh, sorry, uh, what do you mean by in, in terms of trends? Uh, sir, uh, strength in uh, delivery business. Oh, strength. Okay, sorry. Uh, look, uh, uh, obviously, uh, venue engineering is one part. Uh, 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 delivery ratings are another. Uh, we have seen now consistent ratings uh, over quite some time. Uh, overall, it's around uh, 3.9 on the entire portfolio of uh, uh, of some 200 restaurants. Uh, two years back, it was uh, uh, it was around uh, 3.2. Uh, uh, the acceptance in the uh, the, uh, the infrastructure in the outlets uh, is now more smooth uh, uh, in terms of uh, of operations. We obviously did from our own restaurants, uh, creating space for that uh, uh, delivery packaging materials also are are very bulky, right? So. Uh, so operationally doing it from the from the same restaurant in the in efficient manner, uh, all these have now become part of our daily, uh, you know, uh, operating protocol and body condition. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so that's it from my side. Uh, thank you very much, and wish you all the best. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Harit Kapoor from Investec Capital Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Uh, so just had a few questions. One was on, you know, this Q2 functionality. So, uh, you know, uh, Rahul, the 19% restaurant opening margin from Machop. Sorry to interrupt. Can you speak louder, please? Can you use the handset? Yeah, can you hear me now? Is this better? Yes. Yes. So what I, what I was saying was the Q2 seasonality. So 19% restaurant operating margin for the uh, for the uh, Machop store. Rahul, is this normal for Q2? Is that the way... Uh, restaurant operating margin happens in this quarter. I'm I'm asking from the context that we really don't have a normalized Q2, uh, uh, you know, since listing. So just wanted to get your sense. Yes, uh, it is. Uh, it is pretty normalized. Uh, uh, you know, 19.2 percent margin. Uh, if you look at our revenue from uh, per outlet uh, from mature portfolio between quarter one and quarter two, are uh, down by approximately five percent, uh, which translated to around uh, around the two percent decline in our. Uh, in our restaurant operating margin on a mature portfolio, uh, and you know, if you look at uh, uh, you know numbers, we have also also given numbers pre-COVID. So if you look at uh, you know yesterday this term, uh, between pre-COVID versus now, uh, quarter two SY20 also were around 8.7 percent margin, which is around 10 and half percent you know currently, uh, and uh, similar trends are also seen in the uh, in the in the last year's uh, same quarter. So quarter two. Uh, margins being being stretched now, business is definitely there. Plus, the only shift that happens is that uh, uh, if your uh, days like uh, uh, like Maratra falls in somewhere between quarter two and quarter three, this yeah, time yeah. it was in quarter two. Last year it was in quarter three. So to that extent, there's some impact is also come in. But by and large, uh, quarter two always operates like this. Got it. Got it. Uh, the second question was, uh, you know, on. Uh, on uh, the uh, uh, on on the revenue side, so uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, if, if you look at uh, you know, the, we spoke about international, but uh, on the international side, is there a you know, how the profitability been there in terms of you know, margins, etc.? How we've kind of trended there. So uh, in H1 basis, uh, international business is at a corporate level. We delivered uh, 18 percent uh, uh, free index margin. Okay. Okay. Great. 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 And 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 what's the level of price increase in India that we see now on a year-over-year -year basis? Given what's happened on the cost side, you did pass on pay side. So, weighted average, based on a dynamic model, what's what's that number been like? So, on the uh, between last year second quarter and this year second quarter, our pricing would have gone up by around uh, around seven eight percent. This quarter, we have not taken any price hike. We did uh, around uh, four and a half percent price hike in quarter one. Got it, got it, got it. And given you, you're saying that the cost table is uh, uh, 
uh, now lower a little bit compared to uh, you know what it was uh, um, probably uh, early part of the year uh, you don't see any reason for incremental price increases in right right now yeah so we are not planning to do any uh, incremental price hikes uh, in the second half uh, on the pricing side uh, i think meat prices are softening a bit there is some inflation that we are seeing in our dairy pricing but uh, dairy is not a large consumption basket for entire portfolio meat is is, is larger uh so net basis uh, i think we're seeing softening of uh, of input uh, uh, food cost and that should help in, in the second uh, uh, half of the year we are not contemplating any price hike in the second half got it uh, last question was on dumps of so uh, while it's early days uh, you know you mentioned that you know the kind of model that you would like would be at least a 1 crore kind of a, uh, a revenue on a incremental revenue on a per store basis if you are able to hit a certain uh, you know uh, uh, you know daily sales number uh but but if you know from a cost standpoint uh, uh, you know below gross margin uh, you know what's the incremental cost that is required to uh, run this operation in a store in terms of people uh, because rent assuming is a portion to the dining uh, uh, business so, so 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 what what would that cost in the flight so one uh, okay in this dairy business uh, gross margins are contribution margins are lower because we have free dairy cost uh it is food cost packaging and commission and the below that on the fixed cost side uh, to run this uh, delivery operation which also runs uh, ubiq we don't need incrementally more than one uh, specialized uh, maybe uh, you know trained employee can run the uh, run the machines that we have uh, incorporated uh, and apart from that there are some uh, uh, you know electricity costs to run it but cumulatively this is both of them it's, it's not a larger number and so the last question is you know given that you launched this biryani format now uh, i know you're rolling it out through dine in stores currently but does that now imply that uh, you know extension kitchen expansion will also happen uh, uh, you know in the near term going forward or that's going to be the second leg really something to look forward to to fy24 so so that's not our focus right now like i said earlier uh, we uh, we know that uh, our delivery business was down sequentially for long five six quarters right Uh, so the focus first was to stabilize this part rather than adding more capability in terms of adding more infrastructure uh, uh, so uh, happy to note that uh, this is now at least stabilizing and uh, we should see this uh, in this quarter i'm not jumping to add new capacity on extension kitchen uh, we are anyway obviously also doing delivery from the new uh, uh, restaurant expansion that we're doing uh, so i'll just ride on that for some time uh, we'll definitely wait for uh, for uh, two to three quarters to see how this performs and based on uh, the unit economics of the uh, of the uh, extension kitchens that we have uh, already in place we will then think about expanding it but as of now for next two three quarters uh, i'm not looking at uh, putting capital to that god thank you so much thank you alex thank you we have a next question from the line of amandeep grower from ambit capital please go ahead Thanks for the opportunity. So, firstly, on the recovery. Uh, so, we understand that last quarter you had a gap to our 10% coverage in dining versus pre-COVID, as corporate was yet to recover. So, while we're acknowledging that 2Q is seasonally weak, so any sense on how dining now stacks up versus pre-COVID on like-to-like -like basis and trend in the recent months? So, it it continues in the same fashion. Uh, uh, Amandeep also, you know, like I said, the October month. Uh, Uh, also had some uh, uh, you know festive days right and uh, so our business uh, which is one primarily uh, non veg and also uh, you know primarily group eating out uh, uh, going out and dining uh, uh, it is not uh, 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 very amenable or other business then don't get any kick during these uh, festive days for example uh, diwali period for us is likely mean right and october month had that uh, uh, that one week of the entire impact uh, pretty much for the entire country right so early days but uh, based on what we are seeing currently it's pretty much same trend in terms of covers uh, okay. our real kicker comes in the month of uh, of december fair enough uh, thanks for this and uh, secondly on the gross margin front so last last quarter you had mentioned about getting better pricing especially for meat which is a large portion of your overall input cost portfolio and apart from this the delivery business being a bit lower on gross margin as it involves packaging costs and aggregator commission so since delivery business was again impacted this quarter or even on sequential basis can you help us uh, with the sense of what was the exact rationale behind the impact on uh, gross margin on sequential basis so uh, 
uh, on the meat front, uh, we have uh, we have one commodity which is fish, uh, which we largely import. Uh, that pricing uh, uh, was higher in quarter two as compared to uh, quarter one. Uh, so that is uh, uh, that is a big one. Uh, also, uh, across our other businesses, uh, also for example, our international business, gross margin was down there on nine half percent. Uh, in our Middle East business, largely most of the items are imported, and uh, and there there are some price hike, uh, sorry, uh, input cost uh, hike. Uh, similarly, on uh, Toscano business, uh, you know we had some marginal increase on uh, uh, on the on the cost. So the gross margin decline between say quarter one and quarter two we saw across across all the three verticals, right? The impact was lowest for barbecue India and pretty much highest for uh, for international. But even existing for uh, you know for these, uh, the overall margin for these related to smaller businesses, which is both Toscano and international, were were very strong. So now, uh, also uh, just to uh, complete that thought on the on the fish item, uh, uh, post that uh, uh, the new shipments that we got in the month of September are uh, are at low pricing. So that gives me uh, some confidence of H2 that, uh, and we also have some inventory build up uh, happening during the quarter, uh, which gives me confidence that H2 margin should be uh, should be better. So this is this is helpful. And just uh, I mean, as a follow up to uh, to this, as you are uh, say with the addition of combo offers in the delivery business, as you mentioned earlier, uh, with no pricing expected, do you see uh, this would impact the margins, or uh, it is not more of a discount, but a different uh, offering? No, no. So combo offers actually are uh, are uh, uh, better in terms of food cost. I mean, the food cost is lower for the company in combo. Means the food cost is among the highest uh, for the company in uh, in a box product, so it won't impact the margins. Sure, sure. And lastly, on the expansion front, uh, so you have already added 20 stores for Babit in in one H uh, versus the gardens to reach 200 stores. So could we see any upgrades over here? And if uh, there is any change in gardens or expansion across Toscana and international business versus what you have guided earlier? So, so uh, I think uh, we will we'll be at around 40 outlets uh, uh, for this year, and uh, our uh, our Toscano pace I think uh, we will will try and increase. We only done two this year, and uh, we hope to do uh, two more. Uh, one is under construction, and one more will go under construction uh, in next uh, in a few days. Uh, so that is one portion which uh, we'll try and uh, uh, try and increase. Uh, international, like I said, uh, you know we're only doing it from the profit that is generating that business. So. You know, this year I don't see more than one happening, and maybe subsequent year maybe maybe two more. Uh, so that's the way it will it will move. Uh, uh, will 40 change next year to uh, to 50? Uh, uh, I think uh, you know, like I always mentioned, it all depends upon the kind of uh, kind of site that we get and whether they are durable site or not, right? So uh, I don't think we'll take pressure of uh, of opening up more sites. Uh, but if the if the if the business makes sense, if the trade area makes sense, if it doesn't, uh, you know. Uh, leads to uh, to significant uh, cannibalization to our nearby store or the or the market damage defined in the rental sort of is is uh, is something that uh, that can sustain our business. We'll do it. Got it. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Madhu. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Vishal Gutka from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, team. Uh, congrats on a good set of number. I just wanted to know what percent of revenue generally comes from corporate group meals and now then uh, IT companies insisting a lot of employees to come at least thrice or twice in a week. Uh, do you see big revival coming through in the coming quarters as and then see that uh, more and more people attending the office? So the, this this segment has uh, has increased, uh, if I look at sequentially, last six quarters has gone up definitely, uh, better in, uh, in the month of, uh, uh, in quarter one and quarter two. Uh, quarter three again, uh, you know, uh, very early days. Also, a lot of uh, lot of festivals. People went home, uh, so that business was likely, uh, you know, obviously get impacted, uh, you know, every year in this around this time. Uh, but uh, like you said, uh, you know, ID companies are asking people to come back. We should see good sort of movement uh, in uh, in the subsequent uh, part of the year. Oh. Look, we can't track tag. Sorry, just to uh, you know, I know that I gave you very open topic. Just we can't tag the customer as IT. The way to track also is is what is the uh, what is the group uh, uh, you know uh, portion of the business. As in, uh, uh, how many uh, transactions had more than say eight uh, uh, covers per transaction, and then how many transactions happened during weekdays? Because these two are the main parameters in which uh, you know IT crowd comes in, right? 
and these both of these parameters like i said have been improving uh, uh, in a quarter on quarter got it got it thank you thanks a lot thank you thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of vicky punjabi from uti mutual fund please go ahead hi rahul thanks for taking my question just just one observation which i wanted to clarify now if i look at your uh, uh, your uh, delivery sales uh this it seems that the contribution from your own app has been steady or slightly improved sequentially while your aggregator revenues have declined sharply i mean is it something that we are missing in the aggregator platform or is the competition level high that we are seeing this impact or is this just a general change in the customer behavior where i mean where are we seeing the real real impact in delivery coming in no so uh, uh, if you don't correlate the two numbers because uh, uh, if you look at our own digital asset contribution the large part of contributions actually from our dining business right so uh, our our stated point is in our dining business we own our customer uh, approximately 20 to 90% comes from our app and website uh, another 25 or percentage comes from our call center and then there are some walk in and our dependency on uh, on the third party aggregator for dining business is actually extremely low uh, which is you know single digit uh, so that is on the dining part on delivery part on the other hand large part of the business comes from these aggregators so uh, so that mix has not changed uh, in uh, the revenue that coming from our app has always been you know based on based on quarters based on covid quarters over the period of last two years in the range of uh, you know 10 to 15% uh and also given that delivery is uh, is now around 30 not percentage of the business uh so this delivery segment doesn't move significantly the own digital asset contribution business right uh so those two are not uh, correlated uh i don't think they are missing uh, you, know, you know much on these uh, these are greater platform in terms of uh, in terms of marketing uh, like i said earlier uh, the focus was to stabilize uh, this business uh, i believe uh, Uh, and there's a number that I'm seeing on monthly basis. Uh, I believe this is headlines. Uh, hopefully, you guys will see it next quarter, uh, and then uh, we will take it up uh, to grow it further. But you know, long-term perspective, I think uh, all of us are believers in delivery segment, and and this is something that we will build uh, 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 over a period of time. Ashish, sure. so how do I look at this aspect? You know, the last year that we were doing that 55 crore uh, run rate, and today we have more stores but less uh, amount quantum of delivery. So, is, is today the steady state, and last year possibly helped by COVID, and so you know, dining segment closed and customer opting uh, opting for barbecue food to delivery. And last year base was overstated, and this is you know what we are seeing is a normalization of base. And from here we go. I mean, how do I look at this business now, incrementally yeah, going uh, forward? I think I think we should look at it in that manner because uh, both uh, uh, the decline in delivery uh, has been pretty much inversely proportional to increase in our uh, dining business, right? Uh, I think uh, now is the is the time when we are when we are seeing uh, you know pretty much stabilization on on delivery. So if you compare it against uh, against last year, obviously the decline is largely because of the impact of of COVID and obviously one of the benefits that uh, you know we would have received now uh, in the in the previous years. I think we didn't want it that way, but uh, this is where it is right now. Uh, sure, and just I just needed one clarification from the dining segment. You guys didn't understand one of your previous answers completely. So now, if if I look at the dining revenue for 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 this quarter versus say pre-COVID levels, and we've taken price hikes out there as well. So is the dining revenue actually higher than pre-COVID levels, or is is it similar? And 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 the the footfalls that have declined have been offset by price hikes. I mean, is is that the way to look at that business? Uh, you mean on a per outlet basis? Per outlet basis, yes. Yes. So uh, if you look at uh, pre-COVID, uh, same quarter, it is uh, on the on the same mature portfolio. Uh, just dining business, it is pretty much same. It's flat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so price hikes have actually just offset some of the For blow up footballs that could have happened, is, is that the way to to look at it? Yes. Or that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. That that's it from my side. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Manish Poddar from Motila Loswal AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, I have just a couple of questions. Uh, first one is how much is the actual rent paid in the first half? If I twenty two, if I twenty three, sorry. Actual uh, rent paid. Yeah. So I think we said eighty crores was the cash flow. I think post rental is that the number? Oh, sorry, I have to. 
So the reported number is 135 crores cash flow. So if you yeah, yeah. and the rental gets reported yeah, below. Yeah, around 60, uh, around 62 crores actual rental paid. 62 crores. Okay. And uh, just one yeah, more. So you're right. So it's around 10% of our top line. So yeah. So 620 minus into 10%. Body that number. Yeah. 62 crores. Okay. Just one more question. So let's say Rahul, uh, you know, you, you'll be seeing probably you know more stable sales now Q3 onwards. With let's say things opening up, is, is there a possibility, or you know, have you uh, seen that across any of your, you know, cohort of stores, where let's say you know, uh, and you know now incrementally RM should also stabilize. So I'm just trying to understand: is there a possibility in some micro markets where you know you've been able to price your product, you know, significantly higher, or let's say even, you know, because there's more demand and there is less supply, and you know. Uh, of the couple of metrics, both an RM and let's say footfalls uh, favor you. I'm just trying to understand: uh, is there any cohort in the entire 180 200 stores network where you've seen any sort of you know more demand uh, and you know uh, you you being able to charge let's say 10 percent more and still customers coming in again and again? So the, uh, look, our uh, like I said, our average pricing between last year and this year has gone up by around 7 8 percent already. Uh, and as a brand, we always want to be uh, to be value driven. Uh, so overall, at a company level, this pricing will sort of not change much in H2. Uh, but uh, uh, in terms of few markets, uh, our pricing has always been different. So our metro pricing, uh, pricing in some of uh, markets like uh, Bombay, Delhi, uh, you know, Bangalore, is different than what we charge in some of the other locations. So that uh, uh, our pricing will be different uh, within the same city also. So our pricing strategy has always been. Uh, what is relevant for that market and what is the right pricing for that market and we follow that. Oh, oh, actually, what I'm trying to uh, get is kind of two points. One is, uh, you know, the pricing elasticity because in some micro markets like BKC, you're not pricing uh, north of 1,000 rupees and still customers are flowing in. What I'm actually getting a broader sense is, you know, uh, you know there'll be days where you can price your products, let's say, you know, 5 10% more given that. And the demand is more, and given COVID, a lot of this big, big format change of you know kind of closed down. So, are yeah, you getting any sort of trends like that, or that's that's not the case as such? That's that's what so uh, right. So, our pricing is different for weekends, our pricing is different for weekdays, uh, lunch dinner also is different. No, dynamic is fine. What I'm trying to get a sense is let's say if you had charged 100 rupees earlier, uh, let's say pre COVID, now can, you can charge 110 on the same product because you know in the vicinity there are far and few restaurants. Of the same format, or you know, a larger size food food format. So that is what I'm trying to get a sense. So, so uh, the fact is, over the period of last three years, be it uh, be it inflation, be it uh, you know annual price hike, uh, the pricing has gone up uh, from pre-COVID level to now. It's already pretty much uh, uh, you know uh, three years gone. Uh, so, our pricing would have gone up by uh, around uh, uh, around 20 odd percentage. Uh, oh no, so 15 odd percentage over this period of time, uh, and. Uh, uh, you know, some of the new ones that we launch uh, come at a lower uh, price point, and then over the period of say six months, we catch up to the normal price of that city. Uh, uh, so, in terms of pricing engine, uh, uh, you know, like I said, this is all uh, uh, you know kept keeping in mind uh, uh, the balance of that trade area, weekend, weekday, uh, lunch, dinner. Uh, sorry, Manish, I, I don't know. I'm, I I think I'm repeating. Yeah, I, I, I I I take this offline. No, no worry. I I, I hear you. Yeah. Maybe I can uh, understand your, your question well. No, no, uh, I'll take this offline. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. We have a follow up question from the line of Parsi Pantaki from IFL. Please go ahead. Uh, I was just looking at your uh, uh, same store sales growth and calculating it on a three-year Kager basis. So the three-year Kager on same store sales growth is somewhere around 5%. Now, if I further dissect it, uh, uh, so 5% Kager is about, let's say, over a three-year period, 15 17% kind of point-to-point uh, uh, -point growth on a same store basis versus three-year ago. Out of that, 12-13% or at least 10% is coming only from uh, uh, delivery, which was not there or very, very minuscule three years ago. And another 7 to 8% is coming from pricing. So uh, if I remove these two aspects, the same store sales growth over a three-year period is almost zero. 
is this the right way to look at it yes yeah, so uh, uh, same store sales growth of uh, around uh, 5 to 7% uh, uh, kegger over 3 years uh, and with uh, almost 2 years uh, of covid yes uh, that year around 10% out of this came from uh, uh, from delivery and balance came from uh, pricing and uh, like i said there is uh, still some uh, uh, cover volume with respect to pre covid versus now uh, that gap still exists uh, so uh, yes uh, uh, i think jolly or the number is okay to me okay okay and that uh, uh, gap in the cover volume now should we take that as a permanent loss or are you hoping that it will come back so uh, post covid uh, you know and uh, how the corporates uh, have moved uh, uh, it's only been uh, been I think two years, right? Uh, my hope is that uh, uh, they come back as you know IT further opens up uh, and our corporate business uh, uh, moves up. Okay, okay. Uh, secondly, on uh, Dumbsuffer, uh, 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 while you have launched the app, uh, I mean, what are you doing to popularize? How do how will customers come to know that? Uh, there is a brand or there is a place called Zamsafar from which they can order biryani. So uh, uh, all the uh, you know marketing spend on aggregator apps uh, has already been uh, happening. Uh, and you know if you look at month on month increase, there is uh, growth in areas from the uh, from the same restaurants. Uh, in some few select markets, we are also doing uh, offline marketing of these, and also there is digital marketing being done in these. Uh, uh, these locations where they launched uh, uh, the Dumbsafar uh, brand. It's obviously only uh, you know, two months, uh, two and a half months old. Uh, so it will have to go through its journey of uh, uh, of education in the customer's mind and then as the person will have to speak for itself as for the So you mentioned that you're expecting around one crore per month sales from Dumbsafar. At that scale, do you think it will absorb the uh, marketing spends? And if not, at what scale do you think uh, this will be sort of uh, uh, generating uh, uh, sort of a decent uh, profit for you after allowing for the marketing spends, etc.? So, firstly, we are not uh, uh, you know guys who will go out and spend uh, completely on building this brand on offline uh, sort of media, right? Large part of the marketing spend happens uh, on the same, uh, uh, you know, one aggregator platform, digital platform, uh, which is uh, largely on on the data, which is uh, uh, which is which is to relevant customer, uh, you know, uh, all the uh, uh, points on the performance marketing deck. Uh, so in that extent, I think even if we spend uh, maybe six seven percent of our dumps of our revenue and claw it back and put it uh, put it back, uh, I think. Uh, uh, slowly and steadily will build that uh, that business. So, at so this uh, scale the of, question is that, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just asking at the scale of one crore per month, uh, will the brand be making uh, similar uh, EBITDA margins as compared to the overall company, given that there is a lot of operating leverage, you have the same infrastructure, yes. same delivery boy, etc. So, at least will yeah. it be making that 15% kind of EBITDA margin at that one crore kind of scale? Yes. Yes, that's our expectation, and that's how we have launched it. So, if you look at UBQ brand, for example, when we launched it in uh, late 2018, uh, that business was contributing hardly, uh, you know, 30 lakh rupees per month. And uh, you know, uh, I think uh, I'm excited about uh, that business itself being approximately 200 crores, right? Uh, soon, uh, we did that last year, and hopefully, uh, based on our quarterly rendering, now we'll reach there soon. And uh, as Dumbsafar also crosses that journey of uh, three to four year repeat business, customer engagements, you know, uh, that that's another business that should come for us. Okay. And uh, lastly, on uh, cloud uh, kitchens, when we started this, we had a very sound logic that there are stores which are more than five kilometers away from the customer home, and then it becomes difficult to service that uh, customer. Uh, and if at all it is service, the experience is bad because food is cold, et cetera, et cetera. Therefore, we need to open cloud kitchens. Now, what has right. changed in that logic uh, for you to have paused the cloud kitchen uh, sort of expansion? No, so, uh, the logic remains uh, absolutely intact. There is no change in that. Uh, but uh, the cloud kitchen model will work at a particular ADS level. Right. If the ADS comes down uh, in a particular uh, uh, say sale point, be it cloud kitchen or be it uh, 
uh, uh, the body station store from where doing, uh, you start incurring losses, right? So we already have 200 distribution points from where we have to do, uh, you know, sales, and we can uh, strengthen our uh, uh, our operating performance on these, and so that the sales increases and the ADS increases in these distribution points, rather than going and investing money in creating up more distribution points. So, like I said uh, earlier, also, uh, it's not that uh, the thinking business are dead. Uh, first, we have to fix uh, uh, the ADS growth in our existing, uh, uh, you know, outlets. Uh, bring it to a point that it is uh, uh, it at least uh, does not bleed money in extension kitchens. Once it's reached to that point, uh, you know, adding cloud kitchens uh, is not a is not a big uh, you know, problem for us. These are hardly uh, 600 square feet uh, sort of outlets. It can be done uh, uh, you know quickly, uh, uh, and that will do once uh, once our delivery area sort of comes back. So uh, it is paused. That logic remains intact. It is just that uh, today it doesn't make sense to allocate capital to to a segment which potentially will lose money uh, at lower ADS numbers. Right. And one uh, bookkeeping question. In a normal year, uh, the Q3 uh, ADS is uh, what percentage higher compared to the Q2 ADS? Uh, you mean at the total company level uh, business? Uh, yeah. Uh, so this would be around uh, 12 to 15 percent higher between uh, uh, quarter three and quarter two. So, sorry, uh, uh, this is uh, what I meant was on a per store basis. Are you talking about the total uh, company sales or a per store uh, basis ADS? So, so uh, this is, uh, I was talking about more total company sales per store basis. Okay. Uh, okay. This should be around maybe uh, maybe 10% higher. Yeah. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, thank you. That's all. Okay, thanks, Kasi. Thank you. As there are no further questions from participants, I now hand over the conference to Mr. Rahul Agrawal for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, thanks, guys, for uh, all the clarification parts within the call. Uh, we look forward to uh, similar interactions going forward. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Ambit Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.